We'll be reading to you today from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Three more big announcements we need to make before it's good stuff. We're just adding to the family in all kinds of ways. Yay! Yay! Okay, it's this group's turn. What do you got? Oh, yeah. All right, you guys, anything over here I need to know? That's good stuff. That's fun. I love Sundays. And, you know, there are times where the, the announcements are not always good, and there's the, the announcement made, and you can just hear the sigh. And, um, but it's also good that we're, we're together and we can... Uh, hear that together and pray about that together, but then how much more so when it's, when it's good things and we just praise God for that. So good stuff. Ah, good, good, good. Uh, we're, we're continuing looking at families. Um, this week we're looking again at family that uh, we haven't met yet. That's how we're looking at it. Next week we're going to shift gears. We'll be looking at our, our physical families, especially when our physical families aren't perfect. So that's where we'll be thinking for the next few weeks. But this week we continue thinking about family we haven't met yet, people that Jesus would long to have be part of his family, and they're not yet. And we see that as our place to step in and hopefully help them see Jesus for the first time, maybe find Jesus again, uh, whatever that is. We just want to know our place in that. Sometimes we don't know our place in it. We just do what we know is right and step in. And we're going to continue talking about that this morning. The event I want to talk about for a moment. It happened in 2009. It had been in, the idea had been in place since about 2001. But in 2009, there were 18,000 people present. There were speeches and music and prayer present at this group meeting were two U.S. presidents, the, uh, the then Secretary of Defense, and then 2,000 future crew members. And the backdrop of the scene was setting 20 stories above the water. It was a big, a big thing, still is a big thing. It was the commissioning of the, the new aircraft carrier, the USS George H.W. Bush, uh, the latest of its kind to be commissioned. Uh, there's another one on the horizon right now, but as of right now, this one's the new one. Uh, this was the one that at this time, this was its commissioning. Then the first part of its work was done. Um, all, all of the planning that had gone in, all of the construction to make something like this possible and to make sure that it would float, now it's sent out for the rest of its work at this time in 2009. The plans had been followed and a ship this big to do so many different things was finally had been built. It wasn't the first time this has happened. I don't mean with ships necessarily, but with commissioning. If you will, go to Matthew 28. Continue to think about this big boat and that day and those people and all that went on. But then go to Matthew 28. Um, you may have heard this referred to before as the Great Commission. You may even have a, a notation in your Bible somewhere calling this, this part of the end of Matthew the Great Commission. God has come to earth, he's, he's lived as a man, he's died. He's come back to life. And Jesus taught those who followed him, those who wanted to be near enough to him, and those that were around him, they heard. They heard about, they heard about heaven. Jesus talked about his father. And Jesus turned religion on its back. Those that thought they knew what religion was, he flipped it over and he said, this is what it is. And he went back, he didn't contradict anything that had been said earlier. He showed what it really meant, what it looks like to follow God. And it wasn't just religion, it was so much more than that. But now it's time for him to go back to where he had come from, yet he has something left to do. And that's where we find ourselves reading and listening this morning. Matthew 28, and we'll start reading in verse 16. Very short reading for this morning right here. Matthew 28, verse 16. 
Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. It's the Great Commission. Uh, Twelve people present, the Son of God and those with him who had heard and seen some absolutely unbelievable things. Speeches, worship, I'm sure prayer was a part of this. The first part of their work was done, uh, and then now he's sending them out for the rest of their work. Plans had been followed, what he set out to do had been done, and now hope had been built, it's time for the rest of the work. It's the Great Commission. But the question I want us to think about, is this all still for us? This is a long time ago. Is all of this still for us? What if the USS George H.W. Bush never left port? What if, what if it was still there the following year? And the following year, it just it was built and there, there it sat. And it was there the following year. And the following year, what if the crew got sick? I mean, they're there and they, they spent their time on it and they served their time out. What if they just stayed there and they finally, when they got old enough, they just died and that was that? What if we did the same with Jesus' words in Matthew 28? It's like, there it is. That's good. Read it. And then, in essence, walk away from it. What if we just left that idea to just float out there? Jesus spoke it, and there it is. Man, that was good. And we just let it float. And finally just maybe set up on the, on the beach, on the sand. Yes, the Great Commission is still for us. It's still for today. We're reading it today because it still has a place. It's not what everyone's teaching, but it is what Jesus was teaching. It hasn't changed. We're still to make disciples. We're still to help people know who Jesus is and, and ask them to, to join along with us in becoming more and more like him. We're still sent to baptize them in the name of Jesus. And obviously that call still works. That call's still there Jesus' power and what he does and his forgiveness is still there. Looks like the Great Commission is still effective. We're still called out to teach others the words of Jesus. Those things that we've heard Jesus say, we pass on to other people. Just like somebody has told you. Just like we're hearing Jesus' words again this morning. Still there. And we're still supposed to follow Jesus ourselves. We're still disciples. But beginning today, can we find someone who doesn't know Jesus? Can you find someone you know who doesn't know Jesus, maybe doesn't know Jesus like you do? They don't know him as well as you do. And can you introduce him just like you would introduce any other friend you have and you're excited for these two to meet? You know the God of the universe and you want to introduce them to him. Can you teach someone something that you've learned? Maybe it's something you've heard this morning. Joe, you did a great, uh, you took that parable and brought that to today. I mean, that's something you can take. That's something you can walk out of here with. It's something that Jesus said, Joe brought it up to 2017. There's something there to pass on to somebody. And you'll know the right person at the right time to share that. See, that's us doing what Jesus said. It's a long time ago, but if you haven't let that idea just float out there, Beginning today, let's examine our own lives and ask, am I still obeying the instructions of Jesus? Am I still walking where he walks? Am I still doing what he does? Am I still doing that when he said to do this? Am I still doing that? Or I just take Jesus' words and lay them out in my own life, am I still doing that? Because I don't want to be like some of the ones that Jesus was having to flip religion over and say, this is not what it is. It's not just coming to church. And it's not just owning a Bible. It's about being like Jesus. Amen. Beginning today, let's remember why we were baptized. That day, maybe not too long for some, and maybe a much longer time for some of us. Can we go back to that time and remember what we were thinking then? Can we think about that time when we believe God saved? 
We think about that time and that event and those people around us and that person who, who had the honor of baptizing us. Beginning today, if you haven't been baptized, maybe today's the day. Ah, the Great Commission still out there doing its thing in a very powerful way. I want to go back to Nor Norfolk Naval Station for just a minute where this first event took, took place in Virginia. Everyone these days has a motto. Everything has a motto. It's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. Um, when you think about Nike, Nike's motto is what? Just do it. Um, the Boy Scouts, two words, be prepared. Yes, we know these things. Um, McDonald's, they've had a lot of them, but one that just stays around is, I'm loving it, yeah. Yeah, and whether you are or not, that's their motto, okay? We'll say that for another discussion later. The U.S. Navy's motto, they don't really have an official motto, which kind of surprises me. They have an unofficial one, and it's not self but country. And if, you know, Latin, you can read the Latin one, but not self but country. It kind of has a, has a biblical ring to it. Uh, less of me, more of others. And it's even inscribed above the chapel doors at the U.S. Naval Academy. So it's not officially theirs, but yet it kind of is. So after we've been commissioned for duty, Jesus sends out in this great commission. Well, now what? He gave us some things to do in that. We can, we can hear that. We want to know more. We like the details. So now what? I'm still grateful to a professor that showed me this. I should have known this long before. Had Matthew 28 drilled into my head for years and the Great Commission and what Jesus said. But So in, in Matthew 28, we're sent out in the Great Commission. But if you'll turn to Matthew 25, you're going to find that we're sent out also in the Great Compassion. Matthew 25. We'll start reading in verse 31. So in Matthew 28, we have the Great Commission. In Matthew 25, we have the Great Compassion. And they dovetail. They just come together beautifully. Matthew 25. I'll we'll start reading in verse 31. A little bit longer reading, but a lot of powerful, powerful words here from Jesus. Matthew 25. We'll start reading in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He'll sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he'll separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me and I was in prison and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And then he'll say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me in. I needed clothes, and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He'll reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you didn't do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. It's the great compassion, not self, but Jesus. Not self, but Jesus. The, the enemy's waging war. He wants to take down as many as he can. And anything to keep someone away from God or knowing a little bit more about God. And we're, we're called into service. We've been commissioned. Jesus commissioned those with him and those who would follow after him. Keep teaching what I'm teaching. Keep telling what I'm telling. And let it keep going on. Now, what's our war tactic? What are we, how are we to fight? Be compassionate. Be compassionate. What are we supposed to do? Well, to help people eat and drink. Or to get to know strangers. Help people clothe themselves. 
Look after the sick. Visit those who are in prison. They're not complicated, but then what, what does that look like, though, in our lives today? Can we distill that down a little bit more? What does that look like? Maybe it's somebody right now you know that needs a meal. As you go out this afternoon, maybe that person's here and they go with you. Maybe it's something you have in your refrigerator that you share with somebody down the street or next door or whatever the situation is, but you know it's that person. Someone's questioning how they're going to pay an electric bill or something else, and you know. Someone's sick and they need help later this week and you know about it. Somehow, sometimes eyes say words before the mouth does and they'll let you know they have a need. And you know it's something you can help with. Who's in prison that you know? And have they heard from you lately? Compassionately. The great compassion. And I think so many opportunities that I've let go by it's so much easier to ignore those needs and stay focused on my own. And it's easier to justify why I can't or shouldn't or won't or didn't. But then I hear these words of Jesus in verse 41. Depart from me, you are cursed. Into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not a game, it's life. And he calls us to be compassionate. So in Matthew 28, in Matthew 28, we're sent out in the Great Commission, and that's what makes us unique. We're different. Not everybody's doing that. We're still following Jesus. We're still following Jesus' words. We're still proclaiming that He is the Son of God. That's what we believe. Amen? In Matthew 25, we're sent out in the Great Compassion. It also makes us unique. It's not what everybody's doing, but other people are doing it. But that's also what makes us useful. We can believe in God, and that's not always good enough because it doesn't necessarily help. But when we take that with what Jesus said and with what he did, it makes us useful. And people out there need to know. People that are like maybe your cityscape or your neighborhoodscape need to know. So what are you doing with the words of Jesus in these two chapters of Matthew? We're not left with just mental knowledge now. We're left with what do we do with it? Have you been baptized? Have you started working with that one person you know that they might just actually need a friend right now? And you know that as a result, they may actually come to know something more about Jesus. Will you start that conversation with them? Are you serving Jesus by being compassionate to others? Not just in these ways, there's so many more. The list goes on and on. These are just a few, and he gets our wheels spinning, and we can apply it to our time and our place and our home and our neighborhood and our workplace and our schools. Are you serving? KOP is going to have another way to reach out in compassion um, starting soon, hopefully starting maybe late summer, um, early fall, we'll kind of see when things get going. It's called Friends Speak. It's a, it's a program to help international people know how to speak English better. Helps them with conversational English. Not English as a second language, much more specialized. This is, assumes a working knowledge of the English language, but helps them be able to speak better, be able to speak more and what it uses as the text very beautifully is the Bible. It's a, it's a neat program. Um, Jennifer and I have seen this in, in operation before, and we've talked to people who have done it, and we're looking forward to that coming here um, in the very near future. And it's so fun to, to, see this, to see this work out. It uses a, a very easy-to-read version of the Bible. In fact, it's called the ERV, easy-to-read version. And uses these things not to teach doctrine, but to teach English. But in doing that, they get to see Jesus. And in doing that, they get to see the person they're studying with. There are two people involved. There are the readers. And the readers are people who have some knowledge of English, but they want to be able to talk better. They want to be able to converse better, maybe at their job, 
in the community at the store. So the readers have said they'll want to come and we'll, we'll sign them up and we'll work out the logistics and how and when that'll all work out here. But then we also have the workers and that will be us. That will be those of us here that, that sign on to do that. This is where you can be compassionate. This is where you can make a friend. This is where you can help someone know Jesus or at a very minimum, help them know a follower of Jesus. And at the end, they also get to learn to converse better and they've done it all through talking about the Bible and their life and their culture and also finding out more about your life and your culture. Um, I'm going to ask Aiden to show, uh, there's a video made by a, another congregation, another church that's doing this and what they, they've just done a beautiful job putting this video together and it kind of gives a little more insight to what Friends Speak looks like and what it sounds like. So Aiden, if you will. Speak is an exciting outreach because God is sending people of many different cultures to us. People come to us because they want to improve their English. We use an easy to read version of the book of Luke and work with them one on one in reading, comprehension, and conversation. The majority of the people who come to Friends Speak have never read the Bible, nor have they heard about Jesus. But some are very open to learning more. In my case, uh, my readers is, is really a great guy, has a great family, and it's the relationship that's really developed. Started with him, moved to his family, uh, and we now get together, uh, family, just a, just a lovely relationship uh, from this, from Friends Speak. Friends Speak volunteers, the goal is to simply expose our new friends to God's word and to his love. Friends Speak is a really cool experience for me. It's a really casual and simple setting for me to meet new people, to learn from their different perspectives on life, to share about Jesus and what He's done in my life personally, and also grow a friendship that goes beyond the classroom setting that I never thought that I could have had. I think, you know, through the friendship process and through caring about people and, and knowing how to read and knowing how to speak, um, we can effectively be uh, friend speak readers. Some of those fears can break down very quickly once you get to know people and, and there's just a camaraderie that's developed uh, between you know, working together. Recently I asked my friend speak reader if she felt the program had been helpful to her and she uh, felt it was helping some with her pronunciation uh, but she in a very shy and humble way said her English still wasn't very good but she was learning about Jesus. As a Friends Speak volunteer, our goal is to expose our new friend to God's Word and His love. Through Friends Speak, we have a wonderful opportunity to plant seeds. Such a well done video. That, that's one of the, they sent us a link with several of them. I thought this one in a short period captures what goes on. Uh, so that's why I wanted to play that. I wanted you to see that. If, if you hear about this, and we'll, we'll be sharing much more as we move forward with this, but if you hear this and it's like, well, that's something I'd like to know more about. That's something I might want to be involved in or something I want to pray more about. Uh, I just I want, I want you to have that opportunity. There's going to be a sign-up sheet. There is a podium in the back, and it's going to have a sheet that looks like this. If you will give me your name and email address. If you don't have an email address, um, I've got your name and then I, I'll know how to get a hold of you. I'll make sure you get, get a copy. I'm also going to leave that, this up here along with a pen. All it says is yes, tell me more about Friends Speak. You're not committing to anything. This is just something you're kind of interested in. You'd like to know a little bit more about it. I'm also going to put some handouts up here with a front and a back, just some, uh, some FAQs, some frequently asked questions about Friends Speak. In case you're wondering and you want to know a little bit more, I'll leave those up here as well. Those are also on the back. And I'll also, um, tomorrow, tomorrow or Tuesday in the coming days, I'll have Fran send out some more information 
um, for those that aren't here, so we're all kind of sitting on the same page as we, as we move forward with this. Uh, Jason and Trish, uh, they're already a, a part of this. We asked them if they would, uh, Jennifer and I, if they would join with us in, in moving this forward and taking it to the next step here. And this was just a good time of day and thinking about this topic, we're in such a, an international community. There's so much going on here. It's a great opportunity for us to reach out in a way that is compassionate and then also in a way that helps them to see Jesus in multiple ways through his words, through his people, um, good stuff. So some initial trainings underway, much more will be coming. It's very doable. It's very, uh, very doable for us here at KOP. Be praying about it, if you will, and uh, what comes of this and for, for how it'll work here, how it can find its place. But it's just one way. Think how you can be reaching out in your places of work and school, as we've talked about when school gets back in session again. You've been commissioned. And you've been told to be compassionate. May we remember who we are. May we remember how we're to be doing it. Or something this church family can do for you this morning, let us know. Also, as we stand and sing, will you think about what God has done for you? Let's all stand and sing together.